When I first decided to go tiny, I decided to take this big old notebook and fill out the entire thing with a bunch of research teaching me how it was going to be when I went tiny, what I had to expect. I made lists of what I was bringing with me, lists of things I was getting rid of, and everything else. First things first, a lot of these notes I didn't do until later on. This was a big one. If you have a dream, stay the course. This is what was my goal, my, my biggest goal. I watched videos, read articles, and wrote down a bunch of different stuff. I also printed out and looked up you know, tiny house appendixes just to get more of knowledge on everything. Love this quote. I had to write that on mostly every page because it was a reminder. If I wasn't going to need it, don't take it. More lists and plans of attack and checklists. Lots of notes in the beginning. I'll go through some of these things later on show you what those are. I started with the, an index. On each of these pages, that's when all of these numbers would go in. Let's start here, floor plan. So this is page one. I made, like, this is only three uh, top and bottom floors. My house doesn't look anything like any of these, so things do change. Even my colors were different. I was going to do sage green, brown, black, white, and tan for decor and furniture, but that quickly changed to teal, white, and different kinds of browns is my tiny house draft. As you can see, I started it on um, February 3rd of 2017. My house started being built on March 1st of 2018, so it took me a little bit over a year to plan the whole thing. I just started writing down everything. I just took this one day, I just took this one day and wrote down everything I thought I would need to know to make it in a tiny house. Paring down, I needed to go through that, needed to figure out what I was going to do with the cats, my clothes, my business, garden on roof. I did ponder that and I did have a couple layouts with art on the roof but that didn't happen when I sat down with the builder and this is why I was so prepared and this is why everything worked out the way that it did. As I learned more things and what things were called I would write things down. Save in this. Uh, my choices were to buy a house on a trailer, custom build a house on a trailer, have a shell built and do the interior by myself, look into water catchment system. I mean, I, I had to write everything down and I kept referring to all of these things because I needed to make sure that what I wanted in my house was what was going to be in my house. I put that I wanted a skylight and I didn't. So like I said, a lot of these things got thrown away when I sat down with my builder because we figured out a completely different floor plan. So I started with the kitchen and I just wrote lists, what I have to work with. So I knew I was gonna get a refrigerator. I wanted a double sink, but I did not get one because I chose a farmhouse sink instead. Counter space, cabinet space. And when I figured out, when I wrote all this down, I knew that this is what I had to work with. Let's just say drawer space, even though I don't have that on here. What were the utensils that I needed? What do I cook with? What do I use the most? So these were the important things that I was going to be taking with me. I need counter space for all of these things. So I would even draw pictures where I would set up my entire counter and where I would put each thing. Pots and pans needed. I cook with all of these, just other needs. Kombucha is a fermented drink, and the reason why I have a question mark there is because kombucha takes like two, two huge glass jugs to make the stuff and then to bottle it. And then you need the bulk supplies, which is black tea and sugar and a SCOBY. And all of these things are big, so my point was, am I going to have enough room on my counter in order to fit that. Yes, I ended up bringing all of it with me and I have not made it yet, so it's all still in the drawers. Essentials for the refrigerator. I had to make sure that I got a big enough fridge for the things that I use all the time. Make sure I had enough freezer room. Cabinet essentials, I brought all of that with me. I even counted all of these out to make sure that I got jars or plastic containers or swivel. Then I had to make sure that this was gonna fit on the counter. The living room, and there's that saying again just to keep reminding me don't take what you don't need i wanted a huge like tv area movies and books put on a bunch of shelves these were going to be closed cabinets that had movies and books in them and then this and that that was going to conceal that clutter yeah that didn't work out what i have to work with i was going to get couch bed storages 
At the time, I didn't know I was gonna get two. Table in front of couch, that didn't work out. Crossing out things I don't need. Siding against things. This is how my couch does look. This is how I wanted it to look when it comes out. I even wanted little storage spaces for my foam rolls, and I had gotten that idea from somewhere else. I had open and closed storage. I wanted a Murphy bed. Um, again, more ideas. Write down as many ideas as you can in order to get all the ideas that you need. You will be more prepared when you go to design your tiny house because you will have thought of all of this stuff. You will have researched it all. You will know the lingo. All of it. Moving on to the business. There's our sign again. What I have to work with. I seem to to do like the same theme. What I have to work with, what I'm bringing, what I know I'm bringing. I had to write down everything that was important to me. I had to consider how much room I was going to need for everything that I had in my apartment. Where was that all going to fit inside my my tiny house. This is what it all looks like in, in my apartment, and I had to draw it out to see how much room I was going to need in the tiny house. What I had to work with, jewelry cases, 45 different jewelry cases. Now notice I didn't bring all of them. I didn't bring any of this, actually. But here's what happened. I was going to bring all of this stuff up here, and that's how many cases I had. I was going to have to find room for all of that. Eliminated all of that, got rid of all 45 cases of jewelry, and ended up downsizing to just natural stones, a couple findings, wires and supplies, just these things. Here's where I start to figure out how my office is gonna look. This is custom, how much is custom gonna cost? What's the cheapest way you can do this stuff? Thought about a raised bed with pull-out drawers. No longer a queen size bed, now I have a full because I decided to downsize. Yeah, I even thought of what would I do if I had this kind of roof. I even had a deck. I wanted to do a top deck. Look at, see, I thought I was going to have those kind of roof lines. None of that worked out. I even had where all my plants would go, where the tables would go. Garden roof or hanging garden. All planned out. None of this happened. When I moved to my new spot, hopefully something will happen outside, but I planned for it just in case. Storage, my staircase storage. I had, again, designed tons of different storage staircases, so here's like my first one. I had tons of different doors, openings, shelves. I seriously thought that I was going to be able to have what I wanted in a custom build, but when I spoke with the builder, he looked at my drawing and was like, yeah, no, we can't do that. A lot of what I wanted custom couldn't be done, and I didn't really understand that when I've seen such elaborate storage staircases. This is still the same. These were just ideas, random ideas that I had coffee spill. Just keep reminding yourself when you're doing your notes, anything that you write down that you feel is going to be beneficial to you, important to you, they're absolute reminders to keep at your dream. This was one dream that I full forced went at and persevered, like I persevered hard. When I decided to go tiny, I worked at it for one whole year and made it happen in one year. First dream that I've ever worked so hard in a short period of time. If you guys want to grab any of this information, go ahead and write it down. Pause it, take a screenshot. You'll, you'll see some people that we know. They might even be in the group. These are all things I learned from what not to do in your tiny house, so I just wrote all this stuff down. Then I started learning the shapes of the lofts and stuff, and I'm like, oh good, I don't have to deal with that stupid don't, I don't like that at all. I needed a lot more space than that triangle in the air. Yeah. I bought Andrew and Gabriella Morrison's book, and theirs was one of my favorite books that I read. I learned so much.
this is all the information that I would just research day in and day out, week after week, month after month for an entire year. I didn't go into this hastily. I decided to do my due diligence and give it a whole year. I thought of a lot more things because I did this research before I got the house rather than after. If I would have impulsively just gotten the house, I would be so anxiety ridden just because I wouldn't know what to do. She's in the group. measuring my books. I had to measure my books to figure out what size bookshelves I wanted and this is what I came up with. Now we're going to talk about solar. I thought that I was going to get solar and I thought I was going to budget solar into my tiny house, but I ended up not getting solar. When I researched solar, I wanted to see what it entailed just to see if I was going to be able to manage it myself. I don't know about solar right now. Solar is expensive and there's a lot to it. Whoa, this is way too much for just, there's so much stuff to learn and understand and it was a lot to learn, a lot, a lot, a lot to learn. And this is not for waste. When I do get solar, I'll be able to refer to these and I mean, it's just a lot. It is a lot. The panels, I was, I wanted them on the roof, but he said, no, no, you don't want them on the roof. So then I thought, well, I'm going to be in a campground. I can't just have 10 panels lying out in the grass because it's not my campground or solar. It's all, all of this is about solar. It's freaking crazy, but I can refer back to this. I can learn about it. There's so much information. It is not done yet. I'm like, oh my God. I do not do that. I do not turn off and unplug. I don't unplug anything when it's not in use. Seriously, oh my God. If, look at all of this is still solar. Here's some more stuff. Take any of the information, look up, you know, these people. All of this stuff has to be researched. Coding and zoning. A lot of people ask, what is coding and zoning? A lot of people don't know where they could legally park and live, and that is what you have to do when you do your due diligence. Like, I was afraid that I was going to get caught and not know what to do, so you have to learn what you're going to do in a situation like this and learn that a lot of people are actually doing the same thing you are doing. I went through all my books, wrote them all down, and the ones that I started selling, I would put pink. Connecting to utilities, I needed to know what standard hookups were, water, if I was gonna need a spigot on the outside of the house, was I gonna need a filter for water, a hose, my power, was I going to do 30 amp or 50 amp? Did I need extension cords? My sewer, if property I was staying on is hooked up to the sewer. I just had to make sure all of these things was accounted for. This is what it all entailed if I was to connect to utilities off-grid. Then I randomly like cut off and just did links. Any link for any tiny house, anything I put on this page so that I could refer back to it if I needed it. These places allow you to park 
on your own land. Options for where. I could rent land, buy land, backyard of a friend, family, backyard of people who rent, community, a trailer park, campground, free lots, many different options and I wanted to, again, research and do my due diligence on all of them. Everything that entailed renting land. I wrote down my second option, buy land. I would need to know all this stuff. I joined some of these websites just to try to find my own land and I would call those places as well. So this was that Lomax tiny house community that's in Indiana. So these are tiny house communities that I just wrote down. Hey, he's in our group too. Hi, Tom. These were free land lots and stuff, and it, it usually had some kind of thing to it where either wanted you to work in their town or there was always a catch. It was never really free. More randomness. It's just so many details. Can you just see all the details? Just so many details. A lot of the stuff changed when I sat down with my builder because there was a lot of things I I didn't know. He was a lot more simple when it came to describing what I wanted in my tiny house, so I didn't know where anything was going to go. So when I sat down with him, he and I both kind of just worked together and figured out where everything was going to go, and it, it worked out pretty well. There's another elaborate picture of my storage staircase that I wanted. Now here's my expenses. He's who I called for my insurance and he sent me to them. Strategic. More about the systems and what they do and what kind. even made downsizing tasks. Definitely wanted a gooseneck trailer, but my builder talked me out of that. That's okay because now I gained three floors rather than the two floors that I would have had with actually only the one one floor with the gooseneck trailer, so I gained two more floors. Still went with rustic farmhouse bohemian now rather than zen. Crystals, wood, dream catchers, plants, etc. Now we're moving on to certification. Still, again, I wanted to make sure what was I going to have to abide by, I guess, with certain rules and certain codes and certain certifications. A little more on resources. It needed if I was financing. All these things that I wrote down was in case I financed. Ensuring it rather than just the companies of who I would call. What does it entail? How much can I ensure? What is, what's the policy like? I needed to know this stuff because I didn't know any of it. I know so many people ask these questions, but that's what due diligence is. You have to do all of this research in order to find out. Like I said before, whether that's going in a Facebook group or reading an article or taking a course, going to a meetup, anything, you, you could learn about all of this stuff in any way. Oh, look at this elaborate floor plan. It's like a 50 foot house or something like that. Then I kind of got down to the nitty gritty again. In this notebook, I kind of just reiterated a lot of the stuff on in the notebook before. 
bigger preparation for what I was actually going to be bringing and doing. This book will not include solar or anything that I'm not getting. It, it kind of just includes the stuff that I was actually going to be doing and, and bringing. This is an interesting one. I wanted to know about the mail address change, what people even did. I didn't know if people, if I should get a PO box. If I was to stay in a campground, does that address go on my license? I don't, I just didn't know any of it. I have a mailbox at the campground. Some more definites of what was coming with. This is the storage staircase that I had to end up with. I go through all of the places that I looked. So I would write down all of the places and then write their phone numbers down and call them. Whenever they would say yes or no, I would write no so that I knew not to look at it again. These were all lots that were for sale and a lot of them said no because you needed a house on foundation in order to have your tiny house or any kind of accessory dwelling unit parked next to that house. I decided against the land because I did not have the money for a house on foundation. All of these people I contacted. These were the builders that I researched and the ones that I circled are the ones that I kind of narrowed it down to. They had the same price as Incredible Tiny Homes, but theirs included so much more. Incredible Tiny Homes had all of that as upgrades. Ending price was 54,345 and Incredible Tiny Homes was 583. This is all the research I did on my builder. This is the price of the 26, the 28, and the 30. And I ended up with this amount, this amount, and this amount, and just decided to go with this amount. Here's where we start the mobile home parks. I called 37 different campgrounds. And I started doing county zoning laws in each of the counties that was around the county that I wanted to be in. That in itself was so much research to do each and every county because all of them had different information. Lingo in trying to read these codes is crazy. There it is. Woo! All right, so that was a big journey. This one was a long video, but I wanted to show you guys exactly what I did to get to where I was today. The lists that I wrote, all of that stuff. Just everything that I wrote down in those notebooks that could help me on my journey. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe below and guess what? Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.